Hello everyone, we're back and this time we're going to talk about VX. VX is the speed for best angle of climb. We're going to show you some examples, some different options, and also compare to do it with ground effect or without ground effect. Here is an example of VX. It's the only option because it's a short strip high humidity, high temperature, and big trees at the end. No room for ground effect or any other option. Just use VX to climb over the obstacle. See this Mooney taking off from the short field with big trees at the end. He does a little bit of ground effect then start to climb and then goes to the left where he has room to go. Great energy management. This is Camp Patriot in Montana, high density altitude. It's about 4,500 feet density altitude. Short street, big trees at the end. So also VX is the only option. Something very important for high density altitude operations is to lean the mixture accordingly before takeoff. Here we have the camera under the wing and we're going to show you the same takeoff from a different angle. Taking off with 20 degrees of laps and as soon as I'm airborne I use VX, best angle of climb to clear the big trees at the end of the airstrip. Here is the POH of the Cessna 182P and it shows you the distance you need to clear the obstacle at different temperatures. Also high density altitude is mentioned and you need to lean above 5000 feet. This is Estehecken in Washington state. We can see a takeoff from a Cessna 185 length of power and you can see just Normal takeoff. It's not steep. I put this one here so we will compare with a Cessna 170 takeoff with plenty of wind. The Cessna 185 has 300 horsepower. This Cessna 170B has 135. My friend George Head opts to do low ground effect to get plenty of authority climbing just before the trees. When it's windy here in Estehiken, you get a lot of turbulence and your head is doing this kind of takeoff to get plenty of speed and more energy and more authority once he's crossing the street. Last video was about ground effect and this time I did a comparison take off to clear the obstacle, one time with ground effect and the other time just a VX. Let's see the result. First attempt, ground effect. I start with 20 degrees, push the nose, lift the tail, add 10 more, start flying, get into ground effect, reduce to 20, get plenty of speed and I start my climb. I clear the obstacle with plenty of room to spare and speed. So I start with 20 degrees of laps, full throttle, lift the tail, 10 more and get airborne and start my climb. I can see the VX in my headset display of the angle of attack indicator and that's very helpful because it compensates for the weight of the airplane. The difference here is that with VX 
I'm climbing steeper and slower than when I used ground effect for this takeoff. I think the result was pretty even, maybe with ground effect a little faster. The altitude of the obstacle was about the same. From this view we can appreciate more the moment I'm flying in ground effect. Now let's see VX and what is the best angle. And you can see the hood, the angle of attack indicator hood over the glare shield and it's showing two yellow lights which means VX. Again, plenty of room over the trees, just a little bit slower. This is a takeoff from a gravel bar, again VX, because there is some cables crossing the river and I want to be as high as possible, as quickly as possible. This Cessna 170B has 180 horsepower and performs really well. Plenty of room to spare on this climb over the trees. So what I usually do when I have a short takeoff with an obstacle at the end, if there is some room for ground effect, I will go for it. But if it's too short, I will just do VX right away. This is Lake Wenatchee Air Street, Washington State. Big trees at the end, but it's plenty long. So I use ground effect to get more speed, more energy and climb better over the trees. Here is another view of the same takeoff and you can appreciate the ground effect and how tall are those trees at the end of the runway. Many times when you take off from these airstrips surrounded with big tall trees, once you get over them, you get a sinker or you get turbulence and if you are too slow at VX, it can be dangerous. So this is why I always try to choose ground effect to get more energy on these takeoffs. Only when there is room. And as you can see on this takeoff, there was plenty of room in this airstrip. Sometimes you have options. For example, this airstrip in Idaho, marble, is quite challenging. It has high density altitude, also obstacles on both ends. But this time, instead of doing a VX, what I do, I flew between the obstacles, a small hill and the pine trees, and it worked really well. You see a long takeoff roll, and I did use some ground effect to get more energy, but there was not a lot of room. And I aimed for the gap between the trees and the hill, which was a lot lower than any of the obstacles. So sometimes you have other options. It's always good to be aware that you have options. Here is another view of the same takeoff and you can see more clearly. I did use some ground effect and then I used VX after I went off ground effect to climb straight over the small hill. Compared to the other takeoff, I was a lot slower and more vulnerable to the winds when I was over the hill than when I was going a lot faster between the hill and the tall trees. This is Beagle's Airstrip in Washington State. It's short, has some trees at the end, so I use VX right away as soon as I take off. Something important is to have the plan before the takeoff. You cannot change plans during the takeoff because it could be dangerous and scary. If in doubt, don't take off. It's better to take the load out of the airplane and make one takeoff practice. But if you're not sure, it's 
pattern how to do it. Check your POH and if the numbers don't play well, make the adjustments you need to lower the weight or weight until it's cooler or less wind. This is the CJ6 military trainer. What I try to do is when as soon as I'm in the air, I retract the gear and stay in ground effect to gain more speed and then climb up. Always it's good to consult the POH. The POH will give you a base about the safety of your airplane and you can calculate what distance you need to clear the obstacle. You always have to put into the calculations the weight of the airplane, the altitude and the temperature. This one is a typical VX line over tall trees in Costa Rica. Please support Backcountry 182 joining I navigate Patreon. Uh, below Backcountry 182 at the top right can click on Patreon and it will take you to the Patreon page where you can select your membership level. It will show you the tiers and everything. By becoming a Patreon for Backcountry 182, you will not only be helping the YouTube channel, but you can also get direct advice or discount on some aviation products for your airplane or advice or products for your airplane. You can chat and video call.